Hello, how's it going? In today's video, I'm covering the Seeds of Hatred, Whispers from the Dead, and Forging the Horde from Chronicle Volume 2. So let's go! Gul'dan had been tasked with turning the Orcs against the Draenei, so he turned to the Bladewind clan. They had a history of having little fights with them due to living in close proximity. Not only had their water and food sources become limited, but they too had been decimated by the Red Pox. So Gul'dan visited them as a representative from the Shadowmoon clan, and he convinced them that the Draenei were responsible. If they were to spill Draenei blood, the elemental spirits would be pleased and maybe chill out a bit. Like all orcs, the Bladewinds held the Shadow Moon in high regard, so they thought, well this guy with skulls all over himself couldn't possibly be lying, let's murder some Draenei. They assaulted Draenei caravans in greater numbers than ever before. Many Draenei were killed, but also many Draenei were taken prisoner. One of these captives was Loran, who just so happened to be Murad's sister. Murad wasn't happy about this, obviously. He urged the Exarchs to take action. This nonsense had gone on for far too long, and it was time to eliminate the Blade Winds once and for all. Velum, as usual, appealed for calm. Something didn't seem right about this. Although his visions were still unreliable, he had slowly started to regain his ability to foresee the future. Strange images had been bombarding his thoughts, but many of them were indecipherable. But one image had stood out. A shadow looming over the Orcs, guiding their actions. So he decided the best thing to do would be to send Rangari scouts out to observe the Blade Winds and see if they were being manipulated. But the Rangari found no evidence at all of this, all they saw were the Bladewinds slaughtering their prisoners in an attempt to appease the elements. Only a few captives were left, and Loran was one of them. At this point, Murad decided he wasn't going to stand by any longer. He made an impassioned plea to Velen and the Exarchs. Let me bloody launch an offensive against the Orcs, you jerks. And they were like, oh, alright then. So a small force of Indicators and Rangari stormed the Bladewind village. When they reached the settlement, the rest of the captives had been killed. The sight of Loran's mutilated body made Murad fly into an all-caps rage, and he rampaged through the village. Side note. Murad had no idea at this point, but Loran had actually given birth before she died. However, we'll talk about his niece another time. Gul'dan watched from a distance as violence engulfed the Bladewind settlement. The Orcs were so desperate to appease the elements that they fought until nearly all of them were dead. The few that survived tried to flee east towards Shadowmoon Valley, but they didn't make it. Because Gul'dan murdered them. Now only his version of the events would be revealed to the rest of the Orcs. He returned to the Shadowmoon clan and told them how the Draenei had attacked the Bladewinds. For no bloody reason. They just went in, killed men, women and children. Did I mention it was for no reason at all? The seeds of hatred and suspicion towards the Draenei had now taken root. Meanwhile, Kil'jaeden had been messing with Nizal's head and emotions. He'd appeared in the Orc's dream, but in the form of his dead wife, Rulkan. She informed Nizal that the Red Pox and all that other terrible stuff that had happened was the Draenei's fault. They were trying to eradicate the Orcs. At first, Nizal was like, well that was a weird dream. But then Gul'dan returned with his news of the Bladewind's demise and Nizal thought, huh, maybe that really wasn't just a dream. Soon, Rulkan visited him again, and she explained that the only way the Orcs could survive would be to wage war on the Draenei. Not as separate clans, but as a single army. Nizal revealed to his clan what he had learned, and they all believed him without a doubt. So an urgent summons was sent to the other clans, to arrange a meet at Oshagun. In preparation, Kil'jaeden exerted his power over the Crystal Mountain, suppressing the voices of the real ancestral spirits. He also reached out to the other Elder Shaman across Draenor, appearing as trusted ancestral spirits to warn them of the Draenei's violent intentions. Over a number of weeks, the Orc chieftains gradually arrived at Oshagun. Juratan was excited, as this was going to be a rare opportunity to catch up with his bestie, Orgrim Doomhammer. Juratan was now leader of the Frostwolves, and Orgrim was second in command to Blackhand, so they didn't really get to see each other very often. As Juratan, his mate Draka, and Orgrim exchanged pleasantries, Nazal began to address the Orcish Assembly. The Draenei are jerks. Everything that you don't like is definitely their fault. They want to kill us all. But if we unite as one clan, we can save the world. Nazal gave the Orcs a full day and night to consider his words, and the debate began. Warmongering Orcs like Gromash, Blackhand, and Kargath were in full support of this unification. Others were not so eager for bloodshed. One of the loudest critics was Chieftain Zagrel of the White Claw Clan. Juratan was of a similar opinion. Him and Orgrim had been saved by the Draenei, and then invited into their city and given food and comfort. It didn't make sense. Though he felt conflicted, he was in no position to question the Ancestral Spirit's wisdom. Whilst all this was going on, Gul'dan was wondering about butting into conversations and eavesdropping and stuff. He knew the vast bulk of Orcs viewed him as weak because of his physical ailments, so he'd just kind of poke his head in and be like, Yeah, I think we should go to war. And the Orcs would be like, if the cripple's not scared, then neither am I. Gul'dan also took note of those that had expressed opposition to uniting. He wouldn't forget their names anytime soon. At dawn, the vote was cast. Nearly every chieftain agreed. From that day forward, they would be known as the Horde. And we're leaving it there! I really recommend reading the Rise of the Horde novel by Christy Golden. It's basically all of this stuff, but from Juratan's perspective. And it delves a lot more into his relationship with Draka and Orgrim and stuff. 
Plus, Christy Golden is just a really nice lady. I follow her on Twitter, and she's lovely. In the next Volume 2 video, the war between the Horde and Draenei begins, and Azul starts to have second thoughts, albeit a bit too late. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, blah blah blah. But all there's left to say is, thanks very much for watching, and see ya!